Hi, everyone, and welcome to Alpine Intel's The Savvy Adjuster podcast and our Take 10 episode following up on our previous discussion about CAT claims. I'm Senior Account Manager Chris Nichols, joined again by Alpine Intel's Technical Education Trainer Kevin Hulsman and Donan Principal Forensic Engineer John Miller. Thank you again to the both of you for, uh, for joining us here today. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. So we, we talked a lot last time about how carriers and, and providers and vendors plan for CAT events and, and what they should look for in an assessment partner. But I know these times, uh, I can only imagine, can be uh, very stressful for adjusters handling the individual claims. So we're devoting this mini episode to uh, five things adjusters can do to make things easier on themselves when they're dealing with such high volumes during a CAT event. Kevin, uh, why don't you kick things off as far as a few things that an adjuster can do to be prepared to handle an influx of CAT claims? Yeah, perfect. I think the theme here for the overall um, CAT event is, is have a plan. All right, without it, you're just going to be spinning your wheels. So, you know, I've kind of broken it down into, you know, four or five pieces here to help an adjuster that maybe is new with CAT or maybe they've been called up to help with CAT volume with their carrier. Um, and so the first thing is, is the organization and the triage of these claims. And a lot of time with a, a catastrophe event, these claims are bulk assigned to an adjuster, meaning you're not going to get like two, you know, one to three claims a day like that you might be used to as like a local adjuster. You are going to get, you know, 20, 30, 40, maybe 60 claims assigned to you all at once. And so you can't do your normal process of like, I'm going to go look at a couple claims. I'm going to schedule, uh, you know, my claims when I get back to my office and just kind of keep moving through my normal process. You have to basically stop and start planning. Otherwise, you're going to be chasing your tail the entire time that you're on that catastrophe event. So, you know, triage. All right. Who's calling you already? You know, I, I guarantee if you get, you know, 40, 50, 60 claims, you're going to have people calling you saying like, when are you going to be here? When are you going to be here? Um, so the first thing I like to do is just get back in touch with those people and say, hey, I'm scheduling things out now. Like I, I'll call you over the next 24 hours to like get more details, that kind of thing. And then once you've kind of uh, oiled the squeaky wheels, then you really have to start triaging everything, both from the messages that you got left to all of the first notice of loss facts that come through. Um, I really like to map the claims, all right, map them out where they are, because are you going to like see two claims per day, um, 90 miles apart and spend all day in a car, or are you going to try to do four or five in the same neighborhood, all right? Time is everything. Um, so also, your phone's going to be ringing off the hook. You know, you've got 40 to 60 to, or maybe more claimants that uh, you need to get in touch with. So save time a couple times during the day to return calls and emails uh, and set that expectation. Put that in your voicemail. Hey, I'm, I'm Kevin. I'm your carrier adjuster. Um, I'm running inspections all day. I'll return your calls either after lunch or before, you know, 8 p.m. local time. Um, I even had shortcuts on my phone for text messages. Like if I was trying to get in touch with somebody, I'd send a text real quick that says, hey, this is Kevin from your insurance carrier. I'm going to call you in two minutes from this phone number. It's not spam. Please pick it up. I was just trying to get in touch with people as efficiently as possible. Um, the second thing after you've kind of mapped everything, called everybody, is prep for those claims. All right. Get the files ready to inspect as much as possible, at least, you know, whether that's scheduling your drone um, inspections or maybe ladder assists if you can't get up there. Um, and then identify which claims you're going to need expert help on. Um, do you have claims involving heating and air conditioning equipment? Well, if you do, you know, reach out to your vendors, reach out to HVACI and schedule that with them so you're not waiting once you get out there. Same thing with surge claims with strike check. Uh, and then structural, if you know you've got heavy tornado damage or hurricane damage, Engage your experts early, start that process because you're going to be waiting on them eventually. You might as well start that process now, get out with them um, when they're there on site versus a couple weeks down the road. Um, the third thing is really run your own inspection. All right. Have a process and try not to let that get derailed by anybody else that's on site. All right. Set that inspection with uh, the expectation rather when you make contact with that insured. 
Okay, say, hey, this is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to do it. This is why I'm doing it. And then anybody else wants to join for that inspection, they're welcome to come along. Um, this was this was key for me, especially when you're at a hail event. Maybe you've got a pushy contractor. All right, make them do the collateral investigation with you. Walk around, see like, hey, we're not finding damage on our HVAC fence. We're not finding damage on the downspouts. We don't see any screen damage or soft metal damage. And by the time you get up to the roof, anything that might be questionable um maybe all of a sudden isn't hail versus starting on the roof and letting them lead it um and the next thing is try to write that estimate on site all right when you've got dozens of claims in front of you try to write that claim that estimate um as close to your inspection as possible okay you can't write it on site and try to write it the same day okay and then if you can't write it that same day try to write it within that first 24 to 48 hours I mean, the further you get away from the actual inspection, the harder it is it's going to be like to remember it or to complete it. All right. Um, and that comes down to time management, all part of planning. All right. I would run inspections really, really, really hard and fast for five ish, um, six days at most. I would always save one day for rainouts. I would always save that one day for rescheduling for squeaky wheels if somebody had to be seen, you know, because of an emergency. And then ultimately that that gave me time for some of that paperwork for those claims that I couldn't finish up that same that same day. Uh, and then finally, know your assets. You know, who are your partners that are there to help you with? Um, now, are they internal resources like a mentor, whether you got a mentor on site um, or is it a virtual mentor, somebody, you know, you went through training with? Um, who are the managers that you're reporting to? A lot of times in a, a catastrophe work, you're not reporting to your manager that you are at home. So who are the managers? Um, what do they want to see if you need approvals? Um, what do they want on file before you review it? Have those expectations set up. Have a punch list so that when you do send stuff out for approval, it's not going to get turned around and sent back to you hours later missing something. And then last but not least, who are your partners, your vendor partners um, that are there to help you with? Um, who are your experts that you can reach out to to fill in those gaps, uh, knowledge gaps you might have? Who are those vendor partners who are there to help you break a tie if you've got a little bit of a friction or a dispute um, between that? And I think that's a nice transition here to, to maybe uh, pick John's brain as far as what's important to look for in a vendor. And John, can you help us out with that? Yes. So to emphasize one thing you said is when you think you're going to need an expert, call them early. When you get in a CAD event, projects pile up, workload gets high. The sooner you recognize you need one and you call them in, the sooner they're going to get out there, the sooner you're going to be able to get your job done. Right. Secondly, provide a very clear scope. We get scopes determine the cause of damage. I mean, literally, that's it. Most of the time, you have a specific issue that's in hand. A tree hits a house. Yeah, we, we're going to look as engineers, we're going to look at every structural component in the house. But you're concerned about some cracks in the foundation that the owner is saying is from the, from the tree impact. If The more specific you can be about what you need the expert to look at, the better job they're going to be able to do and the better answer they're going to be able to give you. If you have photos, which you do, send them to the engineer. There's just there's never a harm in doing that. We automatically get photographs on all our flood work that's FEMA related. It's a huge help. Remember, we may not be out there for weeks to months after you. So your photographs or the insured's photographs are really important to us. So go find those up front. There's just, you know, even if it's just an abbreviation, you don't have to send all the photographs, but the ones you think are important are incredibly helpful. Any other documents that could be relevant. You have another engineer's report, you have a contractor's estimate, you have, you know, if it's a power loss thing, you know, or water bill records or um, anything that is, is a document that's related to the file like that, maybe of use to the engineer. Don't assume that it's not. If it's not useful, we'll just put it in the file and leave it there. But we're going to look at all that stuff before we even go out. I'm going to look at the photographs and look at the other reports and look at all the documents. And that's going to help me zone in on what it is I really need to be focused on. All right. Um, do you want us to provide repair recommendations? 
Sometimes our clients do, sometimes they don't. If you do, be very clear on that. Finally, be open to communicate with your expert. If they call you and say, hey, I need to talk to you before I write my report, or they send you an email, respond to that promptly. You know, they're not going to do that. And they may call you and say, hey, I looked at this, I'm good to go. But if they say, I need to talk to you, they need to talk to you and you need, you need to get back to them so that they can get their job done quickly. You know, be, be, definitely keep those, those ch channels of communication open. Well, fantastic. Well, that that will, uh, I know, definitely arm adjusters in CAT events to know kind of what to look at, kind of have a, a, a loose checklist of things and should help them um, be a little bit more efficient when those CAT events do happen. So thank you, uh, to obviously, to the both of you for joining us again for our mini episode. And uh, listener, if you're interested in learning more about Alpine Intel and how we can assist in your future claims, you can always go to our show notes. We've got additional resources linked there. Or, hey, go to our website, alpineintel.com. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time.